Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Rick Mercer about Just for Laughs Montreal, the festival running from July 13th. Through the 31st, he's going to be, of course, part of Comedy Night in Canada, July 29th at Olympia. Thank you so much for doing this. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome to my shed. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a very nice looking shed, I will have to say. It's not bad. 40 years of bad. just for laughs. Like, it's pretty crazy. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Well, I always felt it was around for my entire life. My entire <laughs> life. I've been watching just for laughs and you're laughing and then you're going hang on what year was this shot and then you realize oh yeah it's been around for a long time and it's pretty cool because specifically you know comedy night in canada which you're hosting it's gonna be at the olympia on the 29th i think it's interesting because there's like shows and comics from all around the world doing their own kind of like club shows and everything then you have the galas then you have the shows like this one that feature a lot of comics i just love the variety but do you prefer doing those where there's like a lot of different comics and like you like different bits and everything like what's that like for you being part of those like the galas and the shows like that i i I love it i mean the the comedy night in canada show is essentially very similar to the tour that i just did i Mm -hmm. you know myself and uh ivan decker iman al husseini dave mirhej we went out on the road um we went from St. John's to Vancouver. We were one of the first shows post-COVID probably that that actually toured the country mm-hmm. and didn't have to cancel a show. Um, it was great. Yeah. And we've added uh, Sophie Buttle mm-hmm. to Montreal, who I toured with two years ago or in the before times, and Salma Hindi. So it's a, it's a great all-Canadian lineup. Uh, everyone's going to bring their A game, yeah. and it's going to be bang, bang, bang. Just great comedy all night. It, you know, there's such a global respect for just for laughs there's people from all around the world kind of go to this festival they come to montreal you know the jazz fest then they come for just for laughs and everything do you see it as an opportunity to celebrate comedy in general or do you also see it with especially this tour you're talking about with with the comedy night canada do you see it as an opportunity to showcase canada or do you see it as opportunity where canada has an opportunity to really focus on comedy in general I think it's obviously just for laughs is a celebration of comedy. That's a universal language. Yeah. Uh, they have things in French and English. They have always foreign acts and who are not speaking English or French. Um, lots of different types of comedy, comedy being a universal language. Uh, but inside, there's all these subsections. There's always the nasty shows and there's the, this show and that show. So it would make sense that we would do comedy night in Canada. Yeah. But uh, it's not slumming by any stretch. Uh, and it's uh, it's it's, a, it's bragging to a certain extent, yep. but uh, it's just a theme. That's all it is, like oh, any absolutely. other theme. But I know some people from all from from the states that come down for it all, all before COVID. Obviously, they come sure. down for it every year, right? And it's like they make oh, their yeah. trip around the just for laughs in Montreal. Sure, because then, of course, and you also have Montreal as a great city, yep. and uh, people love to come to Montreal. Those galas are stacked. I remember a gala, 2009, because I'm in Ottawa now. It was a year before I moved to Ottawa. I remember Steve Martin hosted the gala. And sure, they're the, totally stacked. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, like, they're announced, like, they don't announce everyone on them sometimes, right? They'll say, like, you know, maybe one or two, but, like, we had no idea who we were going to see. You know what I mean? Sure. So but we you get, knew it was going to be a good show. Yeah, so we get there, and it's Jerry D., Mike Birbiglia, Jack Whitehall, Joe Coy, like on one show. Right. Nick Cannon, Amazing. Like one show. Amazing. <laughs> it's it's so much fun and everything. So I'm, I'm curious about this, because, you know, you had a show um, that was, like, was something that we watched routinely in this house on CBC, you know what I mean, and everything. Um, I'm just curious – for the comedy perspective, because you do a lot of things, you wear many hats. But, you know, when I ask Mark Christian the other day as well, too, do you think that it just happens that you're going to be doing, you know, comedy? You're going to, like, like comedians are going to act. Comedians are going to write. Like, all these different paths, right? They might start a stand-up think, comedy. Does it just happen, or is it planned? Well, I didn't start in stand-up comedy. Yep. Uh, stand-up comedy is something I ended up doing, uh, mm-hmm. you know, after my hair went great, quite frankly. So it was later in life. Um 
yeah, I kind of thought we would have to do everything in yep. order to make a living. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I was also interested in everything. And yep. so I've been really lucky that I was afforded certain opportunities to do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, stand up comedy is one of them. It's yep. something that came along late. And uh, it's been it's been fantastic to work with pros like Ivan Decker and Sophie Buttle and Dave Mirhesh and Iman El Husseini. I mean, these it just goes on and on and on. It's like uh, uh, it's just a great opportunity. So I can't wait to do the show for that reason. It's going to be so great. People can check it out on the 29th at Olympia and tickets are available to hahaha.com. All the info in the descriptions. One another thing I wanted to kind of ask you too, Rick, is not just stand-up comedy. I want to just say comedy in general, whether it's like TV, film and everything. The serious undertones, I don't think we're reinventing the wheel here, but for you specifically growing up, was the, did you always have serious undertones in the back of your mind when it comes to comedy and everything? Because, you know, with a lot of the politics stuff and a lot of that, like, I'm just curious, like, you want to make people laugh, but there's always, you know, important, serious issues that are being brought up in comedy these days. Was that always in the back of your mind? Or again, is that something that just kind of happened? I, I always like both. Yeah. You know, I love Mr. Bean. I love Mr. <laughs> Bean. It yeah. makes me laugh yeah. uh, all the time. Uh, but I always liked comedy that was, you know, had an edge. And I also always liked satirical comedy and uh, comedy about politics, which is often uh, disposable comedy. Yep. Uh, people aren't really going to look back at political commentary 10 years after the fact and go, oh, my God, that was so funny because it's very much of the time. Uh, I like it all. Yep. And uh, I only had two interests in life, comedy and politics, and I yep. managed to merge the two. Yeah. And so I was very lucky that way. You were you basically you genre bender. That's something I talk about on the show all the time. You know, you're, you're the original genre bender, Rick Mercer. <laughs> I'm a genre bender. Okay, why not? I'll take it. It's good. Well, I feel like... And I find it interesting because I don't think... I'm going to be honest with you. I think you had the idea that you wanted to do both, but I don't think... You woke up in the morning and was like, I'm going to do comedy and politics. I, I think you it would you probably said it would be great if I could do it, right? But I feel like, you know, I don't think people wake up and are like, oh, I want to make a comedy horror action movie. Like, I don't think that. I'll tell you what happened yeah. to me. I'll tell you what happened to me. I had a comedy troupe. Yep. It was a bit of politics in the comedy troupe, yep. but not much. And I had a chance, an opportunity to do a one-man show. Yep. And I didn't know anything about doing a one-man show. I didn't know how to write a one-man show. I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was during the Meech Lake Accord of all things, which yep. you're probably too young to remember. But but it was this you know constitutional crisis in Canada, and I was an aggrieved Newfoundlander, and I I wrote about that. So mm -hmm. it really became a rant, and it was like a 15 minute rant about the state of Canadian politics. Yep. And the show became a hit mm -hmm. in Ottawa of all places, and I was very lucky. Um, it was another show elsewhere in the country that died. And the show that died uh, had a great pedigree, but shows die sometimes. There's, yeah. you know, there's no crystal ball. But this show uh, had big, serious backers. And it was going to play Toronto for six months. It was going to play Ottawa for six, uh, six weeks. Ottawa for six weeks, Vancouver. Um, this show died, and I replaced it. And yeah. I suddenly had a, a national tour doing political comedy. Yep. And it led to a career in political comedy. Yeah. So it was always what I wanted to do, but it was very much a fluke. Absolutely. But I think now, because I do a lot of interviews for with, you know, actors and directors of TV shows and films on Netflix and everything. And like now it's like a trend. Now people are trying to put everything in there. Now people want to make the genre bending like action, comedy, horror. You know what I mean? But one of my, some of my favorite films growing up, like I don't think you planned it. I think now it's becoming trendy where people wake up in the morning and they want to do it. You know what I mean by that? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, if I, like I'm not interested in horror movies, yeah. but if I wanted to make a horror movie, uh, then it would be a comedy horror movie. So I can see how some people come about it organically, but I'm sure there's some people who are just <laughs> playing with the algorithm. I can you know. see you in a horror movie, Rick, as an actor that you're just not, you're just being yourself. I probably watched three <laughs> horror movies in my entire life. <laughs> well, I just, the, the reason I, I find it interesting about that genre as well, and you can say about comedy too, is just how it's changed. Like, it just, it, right. it interests me how much the horror genre has changed. You know what I mean? That's just yeah, why I would be just... able to tell you because I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I comedy don't know has changed. Of... You know, comedy has changed for sure. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Uh, it changes all the time. Yeah. And 
and that's you know what makes it exciting and that's what makes a festival like just for laughs exciting because like you say you go to the galas you see these serious serious heavy hitters but you go to the other showcases yep. and you don't know who you're going to see you're going to see the next bill burr you yeah. know uh you're going to see the next steve martin absolutely and no, it, it's it's so great to see all the the change. Like it was just so great to see all these amazing comics, and that's why I love just for laughs so much. Last question I do want to ask you: What do you like in terms of? We talked about comedy changing and everything. In terms of stand up comedy, what like from whether like from a performer or whether just from someone who just like, watches and everything? What do you like these days about the current state of stand up comedy? Well, I was just on the road with Dave Mirahesh, yeah, and. I brought him, came to Newfoundland, mm -hmm. and uh, normally I would go out of my way to be the tour guide. I'm from St. John's, and I had some family issues I had to deal with, and I couldn't. I, I felt so bad. I was like, I'm so sorry I can't show you around my town. <laughs> and him and Ivan Decker went off. No, no, don't worry about it. And I told him a few places to go. And uh, in the cab on the way to the show that night, or in the van on the way to the show that night, he was telling me some of the adventures that he got up to. Mm -hmm. And then he went out on stage at the Arts and Culture Center in St. John's, in front of 1,100 people and talked about St. John's. And Newfoundlanders are very sensitive. I was like, oh my God, this guy who's never been in Newfoundland before is gonna start talking about what Newfoundland is like. And he killed. And that level of confidence and ability mm -hmm. is, is awe-inspiring to me. I would never do that in a million years. Yeah. I would never just go out and on stage in Saskatchewan and tell people what I did that day and my reflect, you know, impressions of their town. And that level of professionalism and being able to do that. And I do not mean to imply that he was just out there free associating. It was yep. joke, 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 joke. Yeah. It was, uh, it was amazing. And, uh, you see a bit more of that and that's, that's amazing to me. Absolutely. And people are going to be able to check Comedy Day in Canada, part of Just for Lost Montreal, July 29th at Olympia. Tickets available at haha.com. Rick, thank you so much for taking some time on Pop Turn. It was so thank great chatting you. with you. Thank you so much. And uh, social media, right? There, like Instagram, Twitter, is that where they could follow you to keep up date with things? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm on all those places. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Rick Mercer and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.